Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our next example of how to use trig substitution to solve an integral. In this case, we have x cubed divided by the square root of a squared minus x squared. Again, we use this relationship on the triangle where the hypotenuse is a, the opposite side is x, and the bottom, the adjacent side, is the square root of a squared minus x squared. Using the identity that the sine of theta is by definition the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, the opposite side is x, oh I shouldn't say adjacent side, it's opposite side over the hypotenuse, and that would be x over a. We can write x is equal to a times the sine of theta. Since we have a dx in here, what we can then do is take the derivative of this, the dx d theta with respect to theta is equal to the derivative of a sine theta, which becomes a times the cosine of theta, and then moving d theta over here, we can write that dx is equal to a times the cosine of theta d theta. Now we have everything we need to substitute into our integral for x and for dx. So that's when we get the following. x cubed now becomes the integral of a cubed times the sine cubed of theta. Sine cubed of theta. In the denominator, we get the square root of a squared minus instead of x squared we have a squared times the sine squared of theta and dx can now be written as a times the cosine of theta d theta. Now we need to simplify that. Well first of all we can factor out an a squared out of here. This becomes equal to the integral of a cubed times the sine cubed of theta times a the cosine of theta d theta. In the denominator, when we factor out an a squared, that becomes a times the square root of 1 minus the sine square of theta, which of course becomes the cosine square of theta, and this a can cancel out with that a. This is equal to the integral of a cubed sine cubed of theta cosine of theta d theta. In the denominator, this becomes the cosine squared of theta, the square root of that becomes simply the cosine of theta. And then this cancels out with that, and then we get a cubed times the integral of the sine cubed of theta d theta. Now it becomes an exercise in trying to find out how to integrate the sine cube of theta, and the best thing to do there is as follows. This can be written as a cubed times the integral of the sine squared of theta times the sine of theta d theta. Now you may say to yourself, well, why did he do that? Well, the reason we did is because the sine square of theta can be written as 1 minus the cosine square of theta. This is then equal to a cubed times the integral of 1 minus the cosine square of theta times the sine of theta d theta. And the reason why we do that is, first of all, when we multiply the sine of theta times 1, that's easy to integrate. That's the integral of the sine of theta. And when we multiply the cosine square of theta times the sine of theta, then if we let u equal the cosine of theta, then du is the sine of theta, or at least the negative sine of theta. And that way we can integrate both sides or both uh, portions of this. This can now be written as a cubed times, now we're going to have two integrals, the integral of the sine of theta d theta minus the integral of the cosine square of theta times the sine of theta times d theta. One more thing. The derivative of the cosine of theta is the negative sine of theta, which means we need a negative in here, so multiply this times a negative, and then we multiply this times a negative again, that makes that a positive. That should have been a parentheses, so let's look at that. There we go. So we have to multiply this times the negative sine of theta, and of course the negative here becomes a positive, so we have the proper differential to integrate. Now we're ready to integrate and see what we get. Let's come up here for some more room. This is equal to a cubed times, when we integrate the sine of theta d theta, let's see here, the derivative of the sine is a cosine, therefore the integral of the sine is a negative cosine negative cosine of theta plus, and here we have the cosine square of theta, and here's the proper differential, so this becomes the cosine cube of theta divided by 3, plus the cosine cube of theta divided by 3, and we still need a constant of integration. 
Now we need to go back and replace this byte by the equivalent in terms of x and a. What we need to do now is realize that the cosine of theta, because we have the cosine here, we have the cosine there, by definition is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, the adjacent side is the square root of a squared minus x squared, and the hypotenuse is equal to a. That means we can replace every cosine of theta by this equivalent. This now becomes a cubed times a minus cosine of theta, which is the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by a. And here we have the cosine cube of that, so that becomes plus this quantity cubed, that would be a squared minus x squared cubed, that would be to the 3 halves power, divided by a cubed, and we still have a 3 there, so we put the 3 right there, plus a constant of integration. And now maybe we can simplify this just a little bit. We have an a cubed here, so this, and then maybe we'll rearrange the term so we don't have to write the negative here. This is equal to a cubed divided by a cubed, that cancels out. We end up with a squared minus x squared to the 3 halves power. 3 halves power um, divided by 3, then the, the a cubes cancel out, minus this times this, this a cancels out, so we have minus a squared times the square root of a squared minus x squared, and we still have a constant of integration, and that would probably be the best way to leave the answer. So again, we end up with something like this in an integral. We realize when we have the square root of a squared minus x squared, we can use trig substitution. The trig substitution we use is defined right here in this triangle. This becomes the adjacent side, the sine of theta being the opposite of the hypotenuse x over a. So we can write x in terms of the sine of theta. We can then write dx in terms of the cosine of theta. We make the substitutions in here, and then we simplify things until we get the sine q of theta. To integrate that, we write the sine squared theta times the sine of theta, and replace the sine squared theta by 1 minus the cosine squared theta. At that point, we have two different integrals. That's an easy integral, and this can also be easily integrated when you let u equal the cosine of theta, and then du will be the minus sine of theta d theta. And when we integrate both sides, we then resubstitute back in terms of x and a, and that then will be the final answer. And that's how we do that.